I think I think this is a, a good time to go ahead and get started. Susan, if you want to kick us off, thank you to everyone who's joined us. Great, I will do that. Thank you, Lucas. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. Take a few minutes to talk about something that I think is really important to um, all of us, and that is getting some of the best and brightest into the public sector. My name is Susan Sherman. I'm the deputy director as a deputy city manager, goodness, <laughs> deputy city manager for the city of Olathe, and I also serve on the government to university as our co-chair for municipalities. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about GDU, but I wanted to give Lucas an opportunity to introduce himself as well. Yes, hello, my name is Lucas Parrish. I am currently serving as the management intern for the Mid-America Regional Council this year. So um, I'll, I'll provide a, a student perspective to our conversation today. And, and I'm, I'm really happy to have this, this small part that to play in helping recruit more to the public sector, such as students like myself. Thank you, Lucas. It's been great working um, with Lucas throughout this whole process and his support of GDU is essential to our success. Uh, for the next few slides, we're not here for a long time this afternoon. Um, we want to introduce our toolkit that we developed over the last several months, as well as give some background about how we got to where we are, put some context into some of the important work that's being done by the in the Kansas City area um, making connections between higher education and public sector employers. Um, this is not done alone. Uh, we are so fortunate to be a part of a VOCAR, uh, working with the VOCAR Alliance on some of these challenges that public sector um, has in, in building that pipeline. And so across the nation, VOCAR Alliance is working with several regions to kind of look at best practices and try some things out. And really they have been a great help to us on our toolkit. Um, the government university um, steering committee came together. Um, it's probably been a couple years now with the premise that in order for governments to have the best and the brightest, they really needed to build that pipeline. Um, we needed to cultivate um, talent in the pipeline. We needed to tell the story of the public sector and make it simple for people to learn about the opportunities that they could have in um, gover on the government side and really make sure that our workforce has the skills as, as new things come to um, fruition over the years. We need to make sure that our government um, employees have those skills to be successful. Um, so if you're interested in the Government to University um, Coalition, please let us know. We'd love to have your voice as we move forward in doing the work of, of this group. The um, is really to talk about our toolkit. And so we all know that toolkits can really be a quick and easy um, way to get through processes that maybe sometimes can get snarled. Um, and so we have learned a lot in talking with higher education and with public sector to kind of put together some pieces that may have been gaps in learning and this toolkit really has that kind of purpose, to facilitate greater collaboration between higher education and the public sector so that we can really tap in to your college graduates um, and let them know of the great opportunities that, that lie within um, the public sector. We can't do this alone. So I think this collaborative effort is really um going to be important that we continue to talk and refine and learn from one another so as so the next slide is talks a little bit about the methodologies that we used right so if you're trying to build a great model you are always trying to get input and feedback and ask people um the pros of the cons, and that's really the methodology that we used throughout the process. So we started with the survey and um, we had a small sample survey of 25 respondents, mainly local government staff. I was 1 of those people um, and the findings were that people were not familiar with how processes worked, whether it was on the college side 
or are on the public sector side. So they're not familiar with the calendar of the campus recruitment. How does that work and how best can we tap in as a public sector into those opportunities with students? They also told us that they didn't have a system in place to manage early identification of students to, to get into those pipelines. So, how do you manage those engagements? How often do you talk to them? Is it email? Is it in person? How best to tap into that? And then lastly, you know, we heard that uh, budget limitations, as we always have, um, can be a hamper to um, spending staff time at these fairs. But I think what we learned is what you put into these things is what you get out of these processes. And um, while these tables don't have to cost a lot of money, it is the staff that goes there. But if you get five people out of that fair, that's a big win for your local government. We also looked at hybrid um, focus groups where they took deeper dives. They looked at the survey respondents and overall the focus group revealed a need to strengthen the relationship between government employers and higher education institutions in the regions. You know, it seems so simple now that you say it and you write it down, but really knowing who to talk to, when to talk to them, and how to make those uh, connections is paramount to our success. So that's really what the focus uh, group had told us. We talked to students because we need to know why students might be interested or might not be interested. And so we um, did a focus group with eight student attendees. Lucas, I don't know if you were in there or not, um, but these were college freshmen to graduate students. So we tried to get the whole gamut of um, that spectrum and they echoed the same types of things. Communication is needed, better communication is needed, maybe more focused communication and also, um, they talked about how to build real world experiences into some of these um, connections that we were making, you know, and again, that's job shadowing, that's internships, uh, kind of try it before you buy it on both sides. And so those all, um, all of those kind of comments and stakeholder engagements helped us build uh, the toolkit that we're gonna talk about now. Yeah, thank you, Susan. I was not a part of, of those focus groups, though I, I would have loved to have been. Um, so getting a little bit more into some of the themes that that we heard, uh, and, and I will start with a, a little disclaimer. Our internet here at the Mid-America Regional Council is is not is acting up today. So if, if I cut out, please feel free, Susan, to, to jump right in. Um, so some themes that we heard, we, we really heard six main themes. The first being many factors contribute to government staff recruitment challenges, whether that's a limited understanding of the higher education hiring process slash timeline, um, private sector competition or, or any other. It isn't just one issue. There are several issues to, to take into account with, with these challenges. The second theme that we heard was students have a lack of awareness and understanding of public sector employment benefits and opportunities. Students that haven't been in the workforce don't understand much more than the number on a piece of paper for someone's salary. Um, those, those benefits, the other types of um, opportunities to serve your community, those aren't necessarily understood by students. And that's a, an opportunity for public sector organizations to really stand out. The, the third theme is there's a need for a centralized location of public sector positions and more opportunities for in-person networking between higher education and government personnel. That, that first piece, the centralized location of public sector positions at the federal level, they recently came out, uh, relatively recently, came out with usajobs.gov um, that has those positions. But what about at the state and local levels? Mark has, has done some work on developing a regional solution to that, and, and we'll get to that a little bit later on, um, but having that centralized location for those interested in public sector positions to go and see all of the possible opportunities will really heighten the amount of qualified candidates public sector organizations have access to. The fourth theme we heard was that students use multiple avenues to learn about prospective employers and jobs, such as career fairs, job boards, word of mouth. Going to where students are it is a very important part of this whole recruitment process. The fifth theme we heard is it's important to streamline the hiring process and to effectively communicate 
with candidates. Transparency is top of mind for students. It is better to over communicate than under communicate because it shows interest in all possible candidates. Another best practice is to provide explanations as to why someone wasn't hired and ways they could improve going forward. Or um, an organization could even go one step further by recommending past applicants who may not have gotten the job they originally applied for, apply for other opportunities within your organization that may suit them better. Um, all of those types of opportunities show interest in that candidate and, and can really improve um, recruitment outcomes. The final theme we heard is audits and metrics can help continuously improve hiring practices. There are always areas to improve, just like with anything. So constantly auditing your process with key performance indicators and metrics um, can do a lot to ensure that the hiring process continues to improve going forward. So now I wanted to give a, a little overview of the, the chapters that are in the toolkit. Um, there are five chapters, the first being perceptions and unmet needs. This chapter talks about an overview of the findings from the survey and key themes from the focus group. It is important to note that the information included comes from a relatively small sample size, so it's more anecdotal than data driven, but it really provides a good sense of general needs that exist for public sector organizations in the recruitment sphere to become truly competitive. The second chapter is about engaging with higher education. This outlines key education contacts for government staff to enhance recruitment efforts. Understanding and leveraging institutional contacts will allow government staff to gain valuable insights into hiring needs and access to potential candidates. The third chapter is opportunities for employer engagement with higher education. This discusses the importance of on-campus brand recognition. A big piece of that is going to campuses, meeting students where they are. When initially connecting with an institution, start with a campus's career services department. That is, those, those um, folks who work for that department will do a lot to get you connected in the best opportunities to get in front of students. The fourth chapter is best practices for government recruitment strategies. This chapter goes into specific strategies for enhancing recruitment tactics from social media to employer retention strategies and everything in between. It's a great place to go to get ideas for how to invest in better recruitment strategies. And the fifth and final chapter is employer metrics and outcomes. As I mentioned in the themes, never stay stagnant. It is always important to continuously be auditing that process and improving it um, because there, there are always ways to improve it and get better and, and get access to better and more candidates. So the toolkit also goes into a lot of recommendations. At the end of every chapter, there are recommendations. And for the purposes of, of this presentation, we have we, we categorize them into three stages. The pre-hire stage is the stage before you even begin the hiring process. The engagement stage is during that hiring process. How, how are you engaged with students? And that post-hire piece um, is all about after a candidate is hired, where do we go from there? So in, in that pre-hire stage, the, the first point is to connect with career services at target schools early on, early summer, or even before that, to identify best ways to engage with students. The second point, second recommendation under pre-hire, create an effective employer branding strategy across all channels that communicates the why of the organization. I'm, I'm a huge Simon Sinek fan. Simon Sinek uh, is really well known for saying, people don't care what you do, they care why you do it. And that can be applied to marketing for products and services, or it can be applied to marketing organizations. Communicate the why of your organization. Why should candidates work for, for you? If you can get at that, that will do a lot, that will open a lot of doors for um, candidate interest. The final point under the pre-hire category is provide ample opportunities to engage and recruit a diverse group of students. For example, that's creating shadowing opportunities, paid internships, where at all possible, it, it is important to pay interns um, to ensure the most diverse group uh, of the, the, um, the most diverse group you have access to. There are certain students who can take unpaid internships, and there are certain students who can't. So when at all possible, creating paid internship opportunities will lead to the most um, wide net that you can cast on possible candidates. That middle column is all about engagement, um, which the first recommendation under engagement is meet students where they are, go to campus, meet them online, professional associations, 
and social media is is really really crucial to this piece and, and that plays into the second recommendation of consistent modern employer branding at all stages of recruitment and hiring there are gray areas in social media especially with public sector organizations but whether it's it's for the best or not students especially students my age that is where they are and and it really provides the best opportunity to get in front of them um, so have that consistent modern employer branding that that can sell your organization to prospective candidates the final point under engagement final recommendation is come prepared to discuss current entry level positions students care more about opportunities that exist for them right after college than five years or 10 years after college so be be prepared to discuss all current entry level positions that exist um, as well as what that can build into salary benefits and, and emphasize the benefits and community and the impact on the community that really creates that separation between public sector organizations and private sector organizations. That final column is the post hire stage. Um, so after a, a candidate is hired, um, how to improve that cycle for the next process. The first recommendation, employers should continuously evaluate their recruitment and hiring practices. The most important KPIs and metrics can be found uh, in the toolkit. That second piece is, is kind of built on from the first one. From what is learned in the evaluation process, employers should adjust their practices. It's easy to collect data and do nothing with it, um, but it's much more important to take that data and actually apply it to the next process so that the process continues to improve after every single candidate is hired. And the final piece, and, and this, this is the most important piece of recruitment, focus on retention. Employees that are genuinely happy are the best kind of marketing. Genuine employee testimonials will get much further than anything else. So really focusing on keeping those already in your organization happy uh, and those you bring into the organization, keeping them happy, will go the furthest way in increasing those recruitment opportunities and interest from potential candidates. So we also wanted to share with you this sample recruitment timeline, and, and this can be found in the toolkit as well. Uh, to, to kind of give an, an idea of what it could look like every single year from summer to early fall semester, mid to late fall semester, early spring semester, late spring semester, and ongoing throughout the year. What are opportunities that need to continuously be maintained? Uh, what are certain points that need to be um, thought about at all times during the year? And, and what are other areas to prepare for and, and at what times? This sample recruitment timeline provides sort of an, an outline and, and we'll give you a chance to we have a QR code at the end that has access to the the talent connections toolkit that you can scan uh, and this exists within that as well so the toolkit may be done but but our work is is just beginning so I'll turn it back over to Susan to talk about what's next for the government to university network in Kansas City awesome thank you great job um so so what now what right um so we have a toolkit Again, in order to make this work, the implementation, communication, and ultimate use, we have to use it, you know, and we need your feedback. So there'll be trial, there'll be error, there'll be some things we need to tweak, but I, I am hopeful that you can share this with your staff, recruiting staff on either side, universities and governments to really um, fine tune what you do um, and how you do it. There are so many things in life that, you know, you get out of it, what you put into it. If we as a local government, I'll speak on behalf of them. If, you know, if we want the best and the brightest, we're going to have to put a little bit of time and effort. And really this toolkit is trying to give you some of the tricks of the trade and how we can be most effective as we go about recruiting. Um, but we do need your experiences, good and bad, and some insights. Um, we all can learn and we can all do better um, lessons learned. So I hope we are opening with this toolkit, we are opening up a communication um, channel between government, universities, and, and the people that we both are trying to serve and, and recruit. So we have some immediate priorities that I want to talk about. Um, number one, the communication. So ensure existence and value of the toolkit is known and used. So um, please do share this. If you have any questions, we're going to take questions at the end, but happy to have this shared uh, across the nation. It is built 
um, here in Kansas City, but we believe that it can be a model for other regions as well. Um, we are piloting the Metro KC jobs govjobs.org. So please take advantage of this one stop shop. Um, it's a jobs aggregator of the public sector for the Kansas City region. And it is free to use till the end of the year. And then I think we'll assess and try to, again, make this a tool part of the toolkit that um, local governments and universities can use and point toward for those opportunities. And then again, collecting feedback from stakeholders has to be part of what we are always doing. We can always be better. The work doesn't stop here um, and we can continue to tweak and become better as a, and improve our best practices. So Lucas, I don't know if you have anything else you wanted to add to that, but certainly we are open for questions, any um, thoughts, ideas. Here is our QR code for the toolkit um, and we are excited to, to launch it and have discussions going forward. And it looks like Lucas may have just uh, frozen a bit. So um, I am sure that there is a chat feature here. Um, I'm gonna open up attendees and see um, if I can see anything that people are asking, you know, we did a, um, if, if any so if you do have any questions, um, I'll wait, Lucas, are you back? I'm back? I think I'm back. Yeah, I think you're back. I've mentioned <laughs> the, the Wi-Fi. I am just happy that I made it through my part of the presentation <laughs> and all went smoothly. So. That that makes me breathe a little bit easier. I'll I'll open it up in that case, Susan, and, and ask you a question. Um, okay. You, you're you're the deputy city manager for Alatha, and Alatha is 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 known for having an excellent internship program for um, aspiring local government officials. Uh, what what what's kind of how can public organizations provide competitive internship opportunities? And what do students look for in determining which internships to apply for and which to accept? Yeah, you know, um, I think some of that um, comes from top leadership. I'm a huge supporter of real world learning. And so we do a summer intern program here at the city of Olathe where we get about 35 interns um, that work in various jobs. They could be at our lab, they could be in our engineering department. I would have a one in the city manager's office. And I think it just helps to keep your shaw sharp, sharp, right? Um, so we do pay for all of the interns. Um, they do real work for us and they contribute significantly. So I think once um, organizations can see the power of internships, um, and yes, do you have to kind of help them along a little bit, but their perspectives are so valuable to what we do, um, what they think works in the community. They're of a different generation on in many cases. And so it really helps us to gain perspective and they become great ambassadors as they go back to college and they go, I had a great experience with the city of Olathe. I'm gonna do that and I never, thought a chemist could work for a local government, but here I am, you know, with my beakers and um, with the summer internships, we also um, bring them together three times over the summer and we'll talk about how to write a resume or what does your personal brand mean and some of those kind of questions to give them not only the opportunity to collect and talk and exchange with their fellow peers, but also hear from our passionate staff and get to see what public servants um, really feel about their jobs. Yeah, there, there are a couple of key things that really stood out to me. Um, one of them, giving interns the opportunity to, to do work. Speaking from my experience here at Mark, uh, the second that my bosses saw, oh, he, he's he's capable of handling some some bigger and bigger tasks, the sky was the limit on what they were willing to allow me to do. And that has just been awesome. Uh, getting the chance, I, I've never had the chance to do more real work in an internship than, than with the Mid-America Regional Council this year, and I have loved it. 
Um, and, and two, interns create, become awesome ambassadors for your organization. If they have a pleasant experience, they will go back to campus and, and tell their friends and, and that will spread and create more interest in public sector opportunities just from, from hiring your one intern. So the one, two, three interns that an organization hires can have a much bigger impact than just hiring one, two, three people. So those are, th those are absolutely big points and, and very, very important. Thank you, Susan. Absolutely. And again, um, I think the uh, government to university coalition is ready and willing to um, help as you see, as anyone hears or sees things that we could improve upon and make more connections. We are um, happy to do that as well. Yeah, I'm not seeing any other questions in the chat. So I, I guess we'll maybe maybe let's end on this as as we leave today. What are actionable next steps for public organizations and higher education institutions to work together to create the ideal public workforce? Now that we've sat through this webinar, where do we go from here? Yeah, I think a, a lot of things are about relationships mm. and um, building bridges and uh, keeping in touch and um, meeting people who have the same goals as as you do, but uh, casting a wider net. And so I think building, if governments can build that bridge to university career centers and departments, I think we will all be better for that. So I would say, let's all just go out and, and make some friends. <laughs> make friends, build relationships. So, I mean, the world runs on relationships. So public sector recruitment uh, is gonna be made better through, through better relationships. Will, thank you, thank you so much for uh, your your comment and happy to, I mean, we're, we're just happy to be doing work that hopefully improves recruitment across all public sector organizations, something I, I know Susan and I are both very, very passionate about um, and not at all biased towards. Absolutely. All about relationships. Yes, it is all about relationships. That's, that's such a, a big piece. Well, uh, thank you all to, thank you guys to everybody who joined this webinar. Um, you can scan that QR code on, on that page or visit the MARC website to find more information on the Talent Connections Toolkit, as well as more information on the Government to University Initiative. The toolkit is really just the beginning. Uh, and with that, we'll wrap it up. Any final words, Susan? No, thank you all for coming. And um, we look forward to working with you in the future.